So for this trip, uh, it was there was a couple different reasons we came out here. Not only for this video, but also to be able to start the 2011 season, to kick it off. Uh, January is the time where everyone tends to start really ramping up their off season to create as much muscle mass as possible. And then during the middle of the season is when we're seasoning that muscle mass. So therefore we can try to fill in the gaps for the September Olympia stage. So what we're trying to do right now while we were out here was to see, assess where everybody's at. They'd yeah. only been training for about yeah. three or four weeks and to make sure we're maximizing our off season. Know where their strengths are, where their weaknesses are, and to ma make sure that there's a game plan going forward for the 2011 bodybuilding season. Two years ago, we filmed uh, the original FST7 video um, around this time. It was the beginning of uh, 2009. And I was on a comeback after losing to Mr. Olympia in 2008. I needed a whole new training system. And you know, I was fortunate enough to, uh, to get hooked up with um, the FST7 program. And of course, uh, Hani's training principles that allowed me to kind of revamp my training and focus on something different that I've you know never done over my the course of my bodybuilding career which you know everyone knows I'm a high volume trainer but what was crucial for me my comeback was you know because I'm so big and uh, the competition I was up against um, I needed to come in at my all-time best in 2009 so uh, we began a journey in the beginning uh, training with um, you know, fascia stretching principles, um, doing um, sets differently where I did high volume before, but this was something different where, you know, I stuck with, you know, pretty extreme heavy weights and I did certain uh, routines where I rested, you know, shorter rest times, which I, my rest times were always short, but this was even shorter and allowed me to get greater pumps and of course, uh, you know, hold better size and conditioning in the off season, which you know, led, of course, for a great comeback and a great story for the 2009 Olympia where I came back and won. And, and uh, ever since, you know, I've been, uh, you know, focusing on that kind of training principle. So here we are, beginning of 2011. When FSC7 was introduced to me by Honey Rambot, I mean, I was kind of reluctant to try something different because, you know, hey, I'm a pro bodybuilder. I've been training this way for a couple years now. And, you know, but um, I really just sat down and, and listen to him and in the whole his whole theoretical approach to this training style and i can say like going into the 08 uh bodybuilding season i mean it really shows some improvements going into the iron man and the arnold and that was when a lot of people started seeing me go to the next level i mean i pretty much gained 15 pounds of you know solid muscle from 07 arnold to the 08 arnold and um i can say i attributed to you know trying the different uh sevens you know toward the end of the workout well uh, going in 09 i mean we pretty much uh, revamped it by even front loading some of the uh, uh fsc7 workouts meaning that we would take whether isolation or compound movement and actually do it at the very beginning um that actually stimulated a lot of growth too in some weaker areas and um, primarily like in my back and my shoulders and i thought it worked really well going into the 2010 season was even better because we realized that we were getting a lot of good volume, but we weren't going heavy enough. And that in itself, I mean, was key because we knew that we could, I could always get in shape. I mean, FSC7 has always helped me get in shape, um, especially for contests and stuff, but we needed to try to revamp this style in order to get even larger, uh, fuller muscle de density. So we created um, a different style where we would do like even five to seven repetitions um, for 30 seconds rest and period. And that allowed me to go a lot heavier with some of my compound movements. So this would include like a hack squat or a bent row, um, even a, a Smith machine uh, bench press. FSC7 just isn't one little piece. And you're gonna be able to see that in this video that it's a bunch of different styles, but one th basic theory about, you know, maximum fullness with, you know, maximum intensity, but yet you're not doing these high reps with little weight. You're, you're actually using a lot of poundage and it's just gonna you know, eradicate the, the muscle fibers, but yet you know, uh, not to the point where you can't train them in three days.
Come on. Good, good. Focus. When you do your sh shoulders, like any other body part, you have to make sure that you're getting proper form. So if you don't get that proper form, you're not gonna get sore. Shoulders are one of those muscles that if you don't work them properly, you will not get the soreness, therefore you will not get the width, you will not get the roundness and the delts, and you will not get you know, the, the thickness. Not only are we doing volume on legs or on back, we're doing volume on shoulders as well. So that will also include doing different variations of the same movement. So for example, lateral raises can be done standing, they can be done seated, they can be done behind the back like Jay did. We can do front raises not only standing, but doing it off of a bench like you're doing spider curls to isolate so you can create more delayed onset muscle soreness from being able to utilize less momentum because you have continuous tension Control, through the up. whole range of motion. Come on. Two more. Come on, come on. Up. So not only will it help you create great gains, but also help you break plateaus. Come on, bro. Let's go, let's go. Three, come on. Come on. Three, three, three. Some people typically One. think that high volume comes with only back or comes with only um, legs. When we do shoulders, high volume is high volume. Uh, we're, we're pushing a lot of blood and we're doing a lot of different angles. Not only are we doing uh, one type of lateral, you know, movement. We're doing two, sometimes three different types of lateral Especially movement. Down here, down low. Control. There you go. Control. There you go. Control. There you go. Good. Come on, Jay. Come on. Ah! Come on. Good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do one arm behind the back, lateral raise. We're gonna really isolate those delts, okay? What we're gonna do is we're gonna go all the way up to parallel with the ground. We don't wanna go much higher because we don't want the traps to kick in. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back down. And then at the very end, we're gonna do a couple of negatives and then also some partials. So that way you can kind of see the whole, the whole thing put together. Let's go ahead, Steve. Good. 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 Hold it. Up. And if you notice, I'm going to actually probably help him a little bit on the way up because he's getting so fatigued. One more, like that, hold it. There you go. Now, just to my hand, partial. Good, one, two, three, four, five, six, one more. Good, good. And you're gonna decide exactly how many reps on the partials depending on the fatigue factor. It might be three, it might be five, it might be seven. Again, you're gonna have to feel that out with you and your partner. So if they're pushing you, you can get a little bit more in if you have that extra energy. And if you don't, obviously you do a little bit less reps on the last part of the, the partials. Okay, again, we're gonna really focusing on the cap, delt cap. It's probably one of the stronger points on Steve. And being able to isolate that by going behind the back. So uh, you notice that we've done that in the past with a machine and we've done it in the past with dumbbells, but now we're also doing it behind the back, get a little bit more isolation, a little bit more continuous tension with the, with the cables. Watch that trap. Let the delt do the work. 
Not the trap. Good. Squeeze. Okay, what we're about to do is we're going to do front raises off a of spider curl bench, which is the incline. And then what we're going to do is we're going to focus on this front of those delts. So anterior delt, and then we're going to be able to really focus because it's going to keep that constant tension through this range of motion. Come on, Jay. Come on. Two. Three. Four. Five. Come on, come on. Six. Pinkies up, pinkies up. There you go, pinkies up. Two more. And he's Come been on. using barbell. Pinkies up. Pinkies up. And so because of the fact that he's been using barbell so much, we're just switching it up. And the the key is also to be able to get wrist position. We can actually do a lot of tweaking when you're doing dumbbells, where when you have a fixed plane like barbell, whether it's a cambered bar or a straight bar, you don't have the ability to adjust wrist position so that you can be able to get that extra one to two inches of range of motion. All right, we're back to this incline bench. I like this bench because again, it helps you isolate. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna, instead of isolating biceps and doing spider curls, we're actually gonna do a lateral, we're gonna do actually a front raise so that we can actually get that continuous tension through the full range of motion, unlike when you're just standing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use 40 pound dumbbells and we're gonna demonstrate two different uh, hand positions. We're gonna go ahead with palms down, uh, down and then we're gonna go ahead with thumbs up. So let's go ahead and do about five reps of each. There you go. Right up, parallel with the ground, good. Good, now, there you go. Good. Good, there you go. Good, good. Go ahead and put weights down. And again, at that point, if we wanted to, we could introduce partials. I could introduce negatives, depending on you know whether or not you need that for that particular bodybuilder or figure fitness athlete, whatever physique athlete, you're trying to increase the muscle size of the shoulders. We do that. Steve obviously doesn't need as much, so we're not gonna really uh, focus too much on him being able to bring out his shoulders because that's a strong point for him. But if you're you know working on width or you're working on that round cap and you, the front of that delt, what you want to do is you want to be able to get those extra reps in, get those extra partials in, get those negatives in. Pinkies, there you go, control, control. No momentum, there you go. Meet it, slow, there you go, there you go. Slow, there you go. So. Come on, come on. Good, 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 good. Straighten out a little more, don't bend those elbows so much. Come on, straighten out a little more. There you go, better, better, go. Three, 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 one. Two, one more. Come on, Jay. Come on, Jay. Good job. Keep that pinky turned as you supinate. You got to come out this way. You got to turn because you got you got a tendency to kind of go out here. So you got to turn. See when you go like this. All the blood in your shoulders. So what we're doing is we're doing rear delts. We're gonna go light because what we're trying to do is we're trying to really isolate and try and strengthen up that ancillary muscle, which is the rear delt. Now he's gonna. Go forward, keep the pinkies up towards the ceiling the whole set. So we're gonna go ahead and do about 15 reps on this. Really get those rear delts to burn. And then we'll work our way up if we feel like it's too light. Lean forward more. Good. There you go. Good. Turn. Come on, drive it up, drive it up. Elbows up. Good. Good. Good set. Squeeze. One, two, three, four, five, six. Come on, Jay. Seven, eight. 
Nine. Come on. Ten. Two more. Eleven. Yeah. One more. One more. Hold it. Come on. One. Two. Three. Good. Come on. Three. Breathe. Yeah. Three. Come on. Nine. Come on. Uh. Come on. Uh. Two more, two more. Uh. One more. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Okay, so basically, we just got done doing rear delts, and we're going back to the FST7 set for delts, only because his shoulders were so pumped up, so full of blood, he could barely move his arms. So we decided to do FST7 delt after rear delt. So sometimes you gotta do that just because the pump is so ridiculous. Okay, 12 reps. 12 reps, 10, 10, 10, 10 to 12. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, three, three, one, two, three, perfect. People tend to ask me, why seven sets? Why seven sets? Seven sets is a number that we created because that was to make sure that we're doing enough. Without going eight, nine, ten sets seemed to be a little too much. But again, each person's different. Sometimes five sets, we'll do five. We'll do five by fives. Uh, with Seth Ferrosi, we've used five by fives in the past for a lot of different movements, but it really depends on the person, individual, and where they're at with their training. It's not a base program. It's just utilizing volumization methods with short time intervals, 45 seconds to a minute, but you could use it on five sets, you can use it on seven sets, you can use it on um, 10 to 15 reps, you can use it on five to seven reps. And that's something that you're gonna have to be able to play around with and see what works best for you, depending four, seven, on whether four, you're one. in the off-season mode or two, if you're pre-contest mode. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Two partials, two partials, go. One and two. Come on, old man. Come on, you're supposed to be retired already. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Two partials, come on, let's go. One, one more, one more. Good. Come on. One, two, three, four, five. As you can see, for sevens, Six. we used a machine compound movement. Seven. We did a hammer strength machine for shoulder press instead of a lateral raise dumbbell or a lateral raise machine. In the Here past, go. Go. for FST7 for beginners One. and inter intermediates, two. we used lateral raises. One more set to be able to isolate the muscle, the lateral, the lateral head of the delt. But because now we're working on trying to build the more thickness and build up the base strength, we've been actually using compound movements. Compound movements are Six. traditionally not good for Seven. beginners because your ancillary muscles Last will kick in. But as a more expert or advanced user will use FST, you can turn around go. and do either One. five sets Two. or seven sets, Three. lower the reps Four. so you don't fatigue the ancillary muscle. In this case, it would have been a triceps, so that you can turn around and really keep blasting the delts and make them thicker bigger like Phil Heath, Jay Cutler. Actually, I think training with Jay under the same tutelage as Hani Rambot, with, you know, with Hani being there, uh, when it's just Hani and I, I mean, we get some really good workouts in, but when it's Jay, I mean, your, your intensity goes up tenfold because He's been there. He's been, I've been pro since 2005. I got into the sport in October of 2002. So I've technically been doing this for eight years, almost nine years. Jay's been doing this since he was 17 years old. So he's been through the ups and downs. He, he's battled with Ronnie Coleman, one of my favorite bodybuilders. He's beaten all these other bodybuilders. And I, I just, 
get a rise out of being able to just train next to the guy. So I can't help but to want to kick some ass and, and have fun. Um, I don't really look at it as Hani playing favorites. I know a lot of people may think that uh, because obviously because Jay won. <laughs> but I think Hani, Hani Rambot is one of those guys where I will always tell people this. He devotes equal amount of time to, to both of us. Um, you know, he made sure that Jay looked his best, especially on Saturday night at the Olympia. But he, it's not that he neglected me. So I love that about him. He, he takes great pride in his work. He wants both of his athletes to look great. And we did. We both looked great. And I'm sure if it would, the tables wouldn't have turned and Jay was second, and I was first, Hani would have felt no different than how he feels right now about training us. Uh, the experience of training with Phil Heath, um, of course, you know, the story goes way back with us, but, you know, we've had workouts together in the past, but they've never been up to the level that we have now. And, and the reason being is now Phil is closer to my level than he's ever been. Um, you, you saw that um, last year at the Mr. Olympia 2010 when I finished first and he was second. And, you know, a lot of people thought, you know, he could have won there too. Um, there's a big size difference, but um, the, the different thing about Phil and I training four, together four, is, four, four. You, four, you know, he has right? his Control. way of training and I have Come mine, on. but Come on. he's to the point Control. now where he's pretty much up to pace with a lot of the weights that I do. And our physiques are getting to that mature, maturing point um, where, you know, he's a comfortable training with heavier weights, which in the past, and uh, when we filmed FST, in Come 2009 on, on the yep. comeback, you know, we didn't train together because um, we just trained so differently back then. But now as we prepare for 2011, you know, he's training with heavier weights, uh, focusing on more depth to his physique, more thickness and, and fullness, which of course, that's what I'm working on too. It's not like we look, you look at our physiques and you say, well, he's missing this, missing that. I mean, my advantage is my width and Phil's advantage is his roundness. So. You know, he's of course trying to build the width. Um, I'm still trying to build width. Um, he's still trying to get rounder. I'm still trying to get rounder. So um, being able to train with him and I, hopefully it motivated him. I'm, I mean, it motivates me even though I finished first last year. I just uh, you know, have a lot of respect for what Phil does and he's definitely um, a future, you know, contender for this title. This is our, uh, our post workout. And I'm overly big because I come here every day after I train pretty much. So, this is Hani's favorite. Get big food. Uh, get big food. This is what we always, when we visit Hani, Can't we always tell? go for uh, Hani's Persian huge. meal. And what's, what's good about this is there's actually uh, quite a bit of sodium in this meal, so it helps inflate the muscles and, of course, uh, you know, gives us a good amount of calories. Especially after we're trying to train and bulk up like we are now and get our, our biggest for the season. So, so usually, um, you know, we'll get the rice, different kinds, either chicken or steak or, or the ground beef or lamb. Um, Phil will normally go through a couple of chickens when he's back in Denver because he likes to eat the chicken and the beef. Which one do you like better? Beef. Beef. Sometimes we get the combo, and then you get the basmati rice, and then, um, so, even though it's high calorie, it's still go. got enough protein. Well, we did sushi yesterday. Unfortunately, we didn't get that on camera, but sushi, I mean, in Las Vegas is uh, definitely alive and well, especially when it's open till like 4 a.m. And when we, you know, with Jay, he's on the midnight, you know, training protocol, so, we were able to do that yesterday. We are doing the Persian food tonight. I think tomorrow night we'll probably do an In-N-Out burger because that's Jay's favorite. He loves an In-N-Out burger. That's Carrie's favorite right here. Yeah. yeah. Her eyes are lit lighting up right now. Yeah, frozen yogurt. Yeah, yeah, frozen yogurt. Way to have it when I leave. No, you don't need it. Um, anyways, so. <laughs> when are you leaving? Tomorrow. So uh, mm -hmm. this is it.